Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and today I wanted to do a video about the uh, PS3 UI customization settings and just going through it with the controller. Now, originally I wanted to do this on the PS3 version, however, I am having trouble accessing my PS3 version of the game. So I am I am doing this on the PC with a PS3 controller, as you can hear, sort of. I'm just pressing things, just rubbing, just, you know, hitting my hands against it. Uh, and that will hopefully replicate it close enough. Uh, if you have any corrections to make about things that may or may not additionally be possible on the PS3 version, be sure to leave them in the comments below. That way anybody else can know them as well. If you have any other tricks as well, it would be very much appreciated. So, very basically, I need to, there we go, get to this menu. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the HUD layout. Why did that just happen? I don't know. So the first thing we're going to do is change the HUD layout. Now this is under Systems, under the main menu, which you access by pressing Start. I'm sure you know that. And you get to this menu right here, which will be your HUD layout. Now, the left analog stick allows you to control the position of this HUD layout thing, so you can move it to a spot where it's not in the way. And the right analog stick allows you to move around the different elements. So what you're going to want to do first, let me just place this back where it was real quick. And okay, I think that's close enough. So what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to press X and cycle through the different options that you have. Pretty much everything other than the chat box is here, and we will get back to the chat box later. Excuse me. So, act action help. I think I could use that one. It's here on the right hand side. I think this will be the easiest one to change around. So action help. You know, like I said, you can move around with the right analog stick, and there's only, there's two tricks here that can help you really get the customization that you want. The first one, and as you can see here, is the change element size. It is the R3 button. By pressing the R3 button, you can change the action help menu to be a different size. You can change any one of these menus you select to be a different size. Now, I know that the PS3 version, by default, has a very, very, very overscaled uh, menu system or a very overscaled UI. So you're definitely going to want to shrink pretty much everything on your screen on the PS3 version of the game. So I highly recommend doing that. It's extremely useful. Now the only other trick I've actually been able to find here is the uh, grid locking trick. Now I found this on the PC version uh, and it wasn't, I don't remember, I think it was control. You hold control while you're scrolling through everything. But on the PS3 version, you simply hold R1 and then move the right analog stick as you would normally. And it will actually lock to this. As you can see, we are sitting on a giant grid. And I was always wondering what that was until I started playing around with the UI initially a couple weeks ago. So now that I know how to do it, I figured PS3 version's got to have that too. And it does. It's the R1 button. It allows you to lock to this, which if you have pet peeves of mine, like uh, hot bars not being lined up, the ones you're using at least, at least the ones that are visible. This is actually very, very useful. You may have to move them around to a position where they were not previously to make sure that they're actually locked onto a grid. But overall, it's a very useful feature. And if you do have that kind of pet peeve, I recommend using it. And as for everything here, that's all there really is to say. There's nothing special going on here. So we're going to exit that menu. And now I'm going to show you about the chat menu. Now, people have asked me on the PC version how I do it, so I've told them you simply drag a, uh, a chat window out by left-clicking it and dragging it. So luckily, the PS3 does have a way of doing that. By holding L1 and R3, access gamepad mouse mode, which allows you to just use the right analog stick as a mouse. So it also tells you that left-click and right-click are left trigger and right trigger. So the instructions I gave to everybody on the PC version was to left-click and drag. So same thing goes here. If you left, if you uh, use your left trigger and drag with the right analog stick, you can actually move your chat boxes to different locations. Keep in mind that the general tab will always be in that spot. And uh, dragging, sometimes dragging them back on can be a problem in itself, though. There we go. You have to drag it really close to the general tab to drag it back on. If you click the general tab, though, the general tab will just move around. You really have to separate battle event and whatever other ones you have. Obviously, it's up to a maximum of four, so... Move, or move them around wherever you please. Sometimes I like having the battle log separated from the chat log, and sometimes I don't. So it's a day-to-day -day basis kind of thing. And that's really, the most part, what you can do here, just what you see here, what you can change. And I just changed to the general tab. Eh, not too big of a deal. I did, I've done that before, too. I do that a lot. I just did it again. Come on, man. <laughs> there we go. I fixed it. So uh, I'm probably going to put a black box over there for a little while in case there was anything in free company that, I w that nobody was supposed to see. I don't know. I'm just going to put it there. 
Uh, so those are how you change your UI elements, but there are other ways to sort of change your UI so that they can be more comfortable for you. Now this is more of a quality of life gamepad user sort of part, but I figure it's only fair to talk about that since it is technically your display and your UI. So you do have character configurations here, control settings. These don't really affect the display too much, but I do want to quickly mention that there is a filter option here that you should explore. Uh, filter customization is very, very important. It allows you to cycle through maybe just enemies or just party members, depending on what button you're pressing, like left bumper and B or left bumper and A. Obviously, on the PS3, uh, you'll actually be displaying the correct commands, unlike me. Uh, but my point is, play around with these, see if you can figure out how to use them most effectively for you. They are all very, very effective, and they are definitely quality of life. As you can see here, by enabling left bumper and B, or what would B be on the Xbox controller? I don't touch Xbox controllers, really. X is square, Y is triangle, so... I guess, I guess it's 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 circle. It would be left bumper and, and circle, and then this would be left bumper and, and X. So, but these are definitely important ones that you should play around with. Definitely get used to them on the PS3. But now, let's actually go back into the display portion. So, let's go over to the UI settings. I spoke about this in the PC version as well, so I'm just going to skim over it. But I do want to at least make note of it in case anyone here hasn't seen my PC edition. So, uh, don't change this, the main menu part. Leave the pause menu as is. The gamepad pause menu is very, very good for the gamepad itself. And the micro menu for the mouse... And not so good considering the uh, PS3 controls as a whole and the way that the UI sets itself up. I recommend if you're playing on the PS3 to try and become comfortable with the gamepad while having a keyboard plugged in. So the map settings, very self-explanatory. Now the map is accessed with the square button, I believe. It's one of the sub-commands, I know that. It depends on what you have selected currently. But whenever you start moving around by default, the map will go transparent. And you can actually change that here, and you can also make it so that if you want to just change the how transparent the map is while you're doing that, you can do that here as well. Now, help menus, these, completely up to you. Item and action help, I like leaving on, but again, that's up to you. You may not want either of those things. And pop-up help and active help windows, again, I don't prefer using them. I've never, actually, I've never actually turned them off because they don't pop up that often anymore. So, again, personal preference, up to you, but the option is here to turn them on and off. More importantly, though, is character information you can turn on and off. Now, character information means pretty much everything on the screen other than the chat box itself. So, uh, for example, as you can see here, display flying text, parameter bars, ex experience bar, etc., etc. You can actually turn these off. For example, display minimap. Turn it off, it's gone. So if there's any UI element here that you just don't use at all, you could choose to turn it off. Uh, it's... It depends on how you play and how useful it is to you. One that I like to turn off is the duty list, because look at all that free space. Especially if you have the duty list on maximum size. Uh, this actually helps. But if you then go actively questing, it can be a little bit annoying to always have to go to your journal without being able to see it on the right-hand side here. So play it by ear. Play it by personal preference. So the final two options we have here are target displays and duty recommendations. I don't recommend turning any of the target displays off. Now here's why. Display target information. If I was targeting something, let's 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 drop this menu actually. Let's drop this menu so I can do a better example. So I'm targeting this guy, right? So next I'm gonna go, so I'm like, eh, I don't really want to see target information anymore. So let's go to the UI settings. Go all the way down here. I can turn that off. Do you really want to turn that off? Let's be honest. Nobody wants to turn that off. That's useful information. That's something that you want. Just shrink it down to a size that works for you. Display enmity list, on the other hand, is it's 50-50. If you don't really look at the enmity list as it is or you don't use it and you just use the party frames to decide how high you are on enmity on something, that's okay. But as a healer or a tank, I really recommend leaving that on. It's good to see when something peels off of you and goes to attack someone else so you can get it back on. Uh, as for display focus target information, you this is the most useless one. You have to toggle on the focus target as it is. You have to select the target, say, okay, I want to focus this target, turn on the option, and then you can actually see it. If you're not going to use that as it is, then displaying it here doesn't make any sense turning it on or off. So whatever, if you never use focus target, it doesn't matter. If you do use focus target, then leave it on. So that's all I have to say. And for duty recommendations, these pop up every time you log in by default, I believe. And you can also set them to change upon area, to uh, show upon area change. These are both completely up to you. Uh, if you like the duty recommendations, if you don't, here's the option to turn them on or off. And finally, I have the party list. Don't turn off the party list. You always want to be able to see the party list. You can shrink the party list if it's too big for you. 
but don't turn it off. <laughs> I mean, again, in the end, it's your choice. Do whatever you want. I just think it would be silly to in party in in a party to turn off the party list. So, of course, then you can also change it to display settings. You can choose to display someone's surname or forename only, their full name, which is the default, or the, just their initials, which is extremely strange and odd to use, but I like it a little bit. And you can also hide the party list while you're solo. That's actually set the default. This means that, as you can see, if I turn this off, then I will always appear in the top left. It'll, it'll always be like I'm in a party. So it's like always showing an additional spot so I can check my HP and MP and things like that. So if you're doing that, you might be able to turn off the... Uh, the parameter bar at the bottom if you don't care maybe you just want to always be looking up there since you're used to being in a party anyway uh but again your preference i'm gonna leave it on so i don't have to see it for the time being there is the display name settings these are things you really have to play around with personally this just shows when someone's name is displayed or when their hp bars are displayed above their heads this isn't too big but the options are there you really have to play around with those individually and get used to them all individually but the one thing that i really want to talk about before i leave this video is the cross hotbar and the sharing settings so first I'm going to talk about the cross hotbar always display the cross hotbar I think if always display is in the name it means that in battle it will start displaying but I don't see a point why you would turn it off for most of the time unless unless you, the your UI is really really cluttered I don't see why also display hotbar help I can't even seem to find what it's trying to help me with so I don't know, just leave it on, leave it off. I haven't been able to find a single thing that this does for me, so not a big deal. Now the pet hotbar, this is actually really, really important. If you're playing a summoner, um, this is probably the most important thing you need to know. But it's only going to make sense to you once I talk about the set selection below. So using the pet hotbar, very briefly, just means that by pressing the right bumper while you're in combat, it'll go to the pet hotbar by default. Uh, this means that you can actually control your pet and that you can still hold right button, uh, right bumper and change around your individual settings. But if you don't use your pet hopper ever, if you never individually control your pet, then I recommend turning it off. Um, if you do turn it off though, keep in mind this means you will not be able to access it, period. There's no way to access it without having this toggled on. So if you even just use one ability, leave it on. But you'll see why it kind of annoys me a little bit how they handled the pet hotbar settings for the PS3 version uh, once I get to set selection down below. Now cross hotbar controls, this just means that if you're holding the cross hotbar, if you hold right trigger or left trigger, it'll show. And uh, toggling means that if you just press it, it'll show as opposed to needing to hold it to actually do the abilities. And mixed means you can do either or you can just press it or you can hold it, either one works doesn't really make a big difference to me. I don't see a difference what with the difference between mixed and toggle or hold. Just use whichever one's most comfortable for you. If you just like to press right trigger and then press your abilities as it is, maybe if you want to just press multiple abilities on that one and you know you're not going to press any other abilities, it could be useful. But just holding it doesn't seem like too much of an inconvenience as it is either. So next you have the cross hopper display. Now as you can see when I hold right trigger, it's actually set so that um, on the left hand side, uh, it shows only the D-pad. On the right hand side, it shows only the face buttons. This is really, really confusing, honestly. So I recommend leaving it as D-pad and buttons plus D-pad and buttons. That means that it by default, when you hold right trigger, the entire right hand side will light up. And when you hold left trigger, the entire left hand side will show up. So yeah, it's just for me, that's what's most comfortable, but do what's most comfortable for you. And it will move them around uh, accordingly. as. As you can see, my left trigger uh, face button one did move over to the right-hand side. Normally, it's on the left-hand side. So just my personal preferences again. Now, set selection. I really want to talk about this because once I, I was wondering what this did, and uh, it took me a while to figure it out. But this actually, when you press the right bumper uh, by default, uh, it actually cycles through your hotbars without you having to press anything. So you don't need to press like RB uh, circle or RB left on the D-pad or things like that. You just set which hotbars are going to be most important to you. And you can just cycle through them from top to bottom order. So from hotbar 1 to 2 to 8, etc. And you can change it so that when, you're, when you don't have your weapon sheathed and when you do have your weapon sheathed. So basically what this means is that as long as the pet hotbar is turned off at least you will be able to just do the following. In fact, I'll show you. I'll turn the pet hotbar off and I will apply my changes. So now when I just press right bumper, because I don't have my weapon drawn, it actually goes between these three ones, which are, as you can see, they're one, two, and eight. 
So just by pressing right bumper, they do that. It's very useful for cycling through, maybe if you don't want to have to like just be pressing those extra buttons and you, you're more comfortable just spam pressing uh, right bumper or R1. Uh, so I find it very useful. Now, when you draw your weapon, if I wasn't targeting Garuda, that would have gone better. When you draw your weapon, you can set it so that it only cycles through specific ones as well. So now, when my weapon is drawn, it's assuming I'm in combat, and I can just have it so, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to need these extra, these extra like, you know, things to play around with right here. So I just pull my weapon out, and now, bam, I'm only going between these two because that's how I have it set. So let's go back to character configuration so I can explain this a little bit better. So, enable customization when you are when you don't have your weapon drawn. It'll go through any of the hotbars that are checked here. And enable customization for when weapon is drawn will only go through these ones. So, you can set these to only combat uh, combat ones. Now, what throws it off is the pet hotbar. When you are using the pet hotbar, those two set selection ones become effectively useless. And I'll show you what I mean. So, I, I, I'm using the pet hotbar now, so I press display. Now, I'm going to put my weapon away. And I'm going to press right bumper. Okay, it goes to that. Now you'd think maybe after that it would go to 2 and 8 like I have it set, but it doesn't. Once the pet hotbar is enabled and you have a pet out, it can only go between your first set 1 and set plus, which is your pet hotbar by default. So, wow, I just noticed that 6 axis works on this thing. I'm just shaking my controller around. It's going all over the place. I need to turn that off because that's annoying. Uh, so it means that... and then. Turn my weapon on. Okay. Any day now. There we go. It's because I'm moving my controller around too much. It still does the same thing. So it just completely overwrites that entire set thing, which means now I have to do this. I have to actually toggle between the two. Uh, so that, again, becomes preference. If you don't really control your pet too often, it would probably be more beneficial to you to turn off your pet hotbar while you're doing this. Um, it, it's just, again, it comes down to personal preference. Uh, I prefer to be able to just press right bumper and go through my hotbars. But I can see people who know how to control their pets and do it will probably want to leave it on. So, again, just play around with what works best for you. That's all I really have to say about this. The last thing I want to talk about is hotbar sharing. As you can see here, cross hotbar, you can set it so that if you set any commands to any of these shared hotbars, for example, 4, 6, 7, and 8, that no matter what job you are, it will actually save them. So as you can see, I had that hotbar 8 uh, before. So this hop, except for the fact that I have my weapon out, and I just jumped, and I have no idea how I'm jumping. To put the weapon away, <laughs> I gotta stop moving my controller around because it's forcing me to target stuff. Uh, so this hotbar right here, no matter what job I go on, as you can see here, which I will change jobs right now, get rid of Garuda, this is saved. So no matter what, this hotbar is always there. It is always set that way. And that is the point of sharing the hotbars. So that pretty much seems to be everything that I can really talk about. Everything else is more graphic settings, gamepad settings, you know, enable vibration, enable gamepad, things like that. Gamepad types. These are more of your personal preference things. There is, they aren't really display settings. So the rest of it is just for you to figure out, and hopefully you can find ways to make the gamepad work well for you, both targeting, UI, and everything. I'm sorry I couldn't do this on the PS3 version. I really wanted to, but I just can't get it to work right now, guys. So hopefully this video helped you anyway. If it did, please like, favorite, subscribe, and share for more Final Fantasy XIV information. Be sure to check out the rest of my channel as well to see if there's anything there. Or if there's anything that you want to see, you can actually uh, message it to me on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, I have a really hard time getting back to YouTube messages lately, guys. So so if you need to reach me, I highly recommend using Facebook or Twitter. You can find them in the description below. Use those, and I should be able to get back to you pretty shortly. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, take care.